Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lecture 3, um, TLDR series. I'm really hoping today will be slightly quicker than last week. Um, my aim is to try and keep them under an hour, but uh, I keep waffling on about stuff that, you know, is probably interesting. I think I'm doing it now. Anyway, I'm going to try and stop doing that. Um, so this week is the HCI, or Human Computer Interface, uh, lecture. And uh, if anyone's done a sort of um, uh, user interface design or some usability engineering uh, design course, it's basically that, but compressed into just one week and particularly focused on web programming uh, considerations. Um, now, uh, I'll just go off on one of my ridiculous asides. This, um, this was actually um, built into the course before we had a user interface design course at RMIT. And uh, so I think a lot of the concepts have been replaced, but um, it's it's good to know what to look out in for, in particular to web page programming. Um, so the first, um, the first thing is, is to make sure whenever you're designing something that it's actually fit for purpose. So, um, uh, and we might have a look at um, uh, Canvas very shortly. And, uh, you know, testing and also just being mindful of your users is, is a very big component of uh, human interface design. Uh, so we sort of had to get this sort of cycle right. We, we sort of do a design. We might make a best guess as to what will work, and then we implement it. And then we have a look at um, how people are receiving it. So um, I don't know if you have access to any um, Canvas uh, discussion forums, but there's a, there's a lot of buzz on the evaluation. Um, but the trick is to actually make this step. So once things have been evaluated, then you need to feed that back into the design, implement those changes, and keep going around. Any break in this chain um, will stop development of a, a friendly website. Let's just say a friendly website. Um, now, in general, um, whenever you're d d designing a project, and this works for anything, this is Software Engineering 101, um, any time you crimp during the design phase and making sure you totally understand the uh, project, any any sort of minute you cut is going to blow out to be hours in the future. So most software projects go over cost because something that was missed in the design phase has sort of reared its head and caused a problem in the um, in the final version. And I like to sort of, uh, if anyone uses a metro ticket to travel around on public transport, uh, in Melbourne uh, many years ago, we had the Mikey system and we could have bought Oyster, you know, a, a system that works in other countries, but um, the Victorian government decided, oh, let's develop our own cheaper version. And uh, there was just one small problem that the cards, for some reason, weren't being activated by the readers. So for a few months uh, during peak hour, the train staff just basically opened up all the gates because uh, it was just too slow letting people come through. And that took a long time to fix, to develop better readers that actually read the kit cards in less than a minute. Uh, now they're like second, well, even less than a second. So um, there is this thing, it's uh, pay a little more now during the thinking stage or pay a lot later. It's totally your choice. Um, also, um, you know, sometimes you, you've got a great design and then, uh, then you do your testing, and you realize you've got something like this that, you know, the two drawers won't open because one handle on one process is blocking the other. So uh, it's always good to have some testing as you go. Um, so designing interfaces, uh, the design of interface requires understanding of users and their tasks. Uh, so if you think about... Um, if you think about uh, 
canvas, you know, student tasks. So they're an audience type. Uh, they, they'll have different expectations. And um, you've got your teachers and you've got your markers. And then above teachers, you've got like administrators who are obviously supervising uh, all the teachers and making sure they're doing the right thing. And uh, all of these things are, you know, uh, it's it's not just um, it's not just, not just one type of view. So you've got to think about all the different types of audiences uh, that are using your uh, software. And um, we'll basically look at audiences and users uh, very shortly. <laughs> So uh, design should be based on users' abilities, uh, the context, uh, importantly, uh, the tasks, of course, and also the real needs. Um, so sometimes you may you may develop a system. So I know in uh, Canvas, for example, in the Grade Center, when we're marking you, uh, even though it's possible to get in there and find a student and click on the student, and then open up the speed grader in a new tab. The process, it takes about five or six steps, and it would be really nice if that could just be like one step. That would be great. So there are little things like that. Um, also, you know, you may have built the thing correctly, but the the efficiency is not very good. You're making the user making, you know, you making the user uh, making multiple clicks. Now, one of the good things about the assignment this uh, period, it, there's really only one main page which has got all the content and then at the end there's another page which is styled differently and it's meant to be just the receipt and that's supposed to be like a a4 letterhead um tax invoice with you know um gst on it or something so essentially um we're not making you develop multiple pages so really just the layout of what's important on the main page is the key thing in our assignments two three and four so targeting audiences and i think uh, this this is actually quite true of most um, university websites um, you've got things on the front page uh, that um, you know the client thinks is important and then you've got uh, what uh, people actually are going to the site for. And um, usually there's an overlap. Uh, the full name of the school is uh, what both groups do find useful. So uh, if, if you want to, because I have um, sort of promoted the RMIT's main page, uh, you might want to sort of like see how true this is. And uh, for anyone interested, this is a cartoon from a website called xkcd.com. And um, I keep forgetting his name. It's so embarrassing. Um, let me just open that up in another page. I like to give people um, proper attribution here. Uh, do, do, do. So, Randall Munro, that's right. I keep thinking his name's Michael, and I know, no, it's not Michael. That's his, his last name begins with him. Uh, so, XKCD. Lots of great cartoons, um, and this if you ever see a cartoon you don't understand, uh, there's an explain XKCD that explain it for dummies, which is good. So you have an audience. Uh, so particularly with RMIT, as I said, you know you've got students, you've got teachers, you've got uh, say parents, parents um, who are obviously sending this kids to school maybe true for say secondary education but i think also true for tertiary education particularly if you're an international student uh, because parents are forking out a lot of money for their kids to go to uni in a foreign land so uh, you do uh, need to appeal to them so there is a there is a kind of um, a broader term for people using your website which is called stakeholders and this is for everyone that's involved with the project. So it could be staff that are building the website. It's anyone who's got some kind of stake or skin in the game, um, how things are going to work. So, you know, if you're not going to feed and water your developers properly, they're, they're, it could delay the project. Um, so 
stakeholders is a term that also includes the end users or the audience, basically. So uh, all should be involved um, as much as possible. Uh, so audience diversity. Um, so as I, I keep giving away, I keep giving away the answers. So um, I've got basically a list of uh, possible people. So your obvious one are current students, uh, prospective students, and uh, but also you know Australian government auditors. That's important because uh, if a school loses uh, their accreditation, that can really impact their business. So you need to keep them happy, and also international university rankers. If um, you know, if they trip over the very first hurdle, which is how usable is your website, um, you know, it's it's only going to hurt. You can have the greatest university, but if your website's bad, uh, people might remember that first impressions and all that. So uh, targeting to different audiences. This is a this is another thing. So audiences. Um, we're now looking at. Um, I like to reserve the term audiences. It's actually people who are going to bring in business or bring in money to your to your business. So, uh, so uh, I suppose current staff they they can often be accidentally skipped over. But if this if your staff aren't happy, you know they're going to cost you money because you're going to have to replace them or they're not going to be working as efficiently. So, uh, you know anything that brings in money or saves you money is is very important. Now, in the introduction video, I did talk about uh, the Victoria Star, which is a um, a commercial business. So I'll just declare that I'm good friends with the owner, and um, this is not an ad. Uh, but it's an interesting uh, business um, because it has it wants to appeal to different audiences, and uh, so you might have university students uh, wanting to host a nightclub party, which does happen. And uh, but you also want to look as glamorous as you can for you know weddings and corporate events. You want to seem a little bit above that. So these two audience types are in conflict with each other, um, and you need to sort of try and keep them separate. So uh, the good thing about this business is they do change the website um, quite a bit. So this is the landing page. And we'll be having a look at, uh, I don't know, maybe some of the flaws. I'd like to think that the contrast of these links aren't quite good enough. And also the sub menu, these are nice and big. These are good, and the contrast is good. But for some reason, the these links are very small. Um, I think they've made a decision to sort of try and keep the, the links uh, not taking up too much real estate. But um, And also this whole you know full screen. Thing on the front is good, but uh, hopefully you've been watching the images that are popping up. If not, feel free to to rewind. So we, what we've got is we've got a mix of things. We've got some uh, obviously this is a wedding, and uh, but hopefully it's really a sort of general thing. They're trying to sort of showcase the ship, uh, pictures of people, uh, another wedding shot here. Um, this might be a sort of corporate thing, like a Christmas breakup or something like that, or maybe a product launch or something. And uh, one thing they do is, uh, you know, any fireworks like New Year's, um, they'll be out. Um, so at this stage, it's kept very general. And um, oh, by the way, this is this is a parallax website, and what I'm actually after, what I want you guys to do is to have at least one section in your assignment which has this effect where the the background uh, position is fixed so as you scroll the background doesn't change so you get this kind of parallax effect which is quite cool and oh this one is also a parallax effect oh they're all parallax effects except for the first one that's interesting so uh, a very general page and what you've got here is basically as you're scrolling down, you know, corporate events, read more, weddings, read more, and uh, dance parties. So this is this is if you like um, where you've got your nightlife kind of crowd. Uh, 
a little bit further down from the wedding. So you don't want the wedding people to be put off. Um, so this a commercial decision that dance party people will scroll and maybe weddings weddings need to be protected as do corporate events so these people don't need to see anything below this level and uh you know and then as you scroll down you see it does other things and you just leave right down the bottom so once you have a landing page um then what you do is you then have a click through to more specific pages, knowing that the audience that you've captured are looking for a corporate event or are looking for a wedding. So we might click on weddings. And then what you have is a page that is totally dedicated to weddings. And uh, there's no confusion from here on. It's um, they know that the audience are looking for a wedding and not a nightclub venue. So that's what I mean. Uh, the, so the home page needs to be, um, excuse me, whilst I just have a quick cough. Uh, the home page on a multi page website uh, needs to be appealed to the widest possible audience. And there may need to be some compromises taken about how. Um, important the audience is and we'll have a look at crowns casino in the chat um, just to see how they do things and and then those areas then click through to more specialized sub pages so <clears throat> then when we come to the web design you may have a company that has some very strong colors so for example um, I'm only saying this because there's been a recent election and you may have noticed that uh, colors are a very important thing. And um, just uh, in the seat of, oh, Tony Abbott's old seat begins with W, uh, the candidate that's just been elected to the independent candidate that's just been elected, we're very careful to choose colors that were very close to liberal, so very blue, but also an aqua color, which is a sort of blend between blue and green, and it also matches the color of the sea. And um, just with this, some simple uses of color, uh, you can communicate a message without any words being needed. So um, I think she's on record as saying, you know, they engage someone to actually it's not just the, the leader. It's actually a whole ground grassroots support for that campaign. And uh, they engage someone for, you know, the colors and they they settled on blue and that sort of aqua blue uh, for a very, you know, specific reason. So um, so when when you choose choose a color scheme, you, you know, you, you may think, oh, yeah, these, these colors go really well together. Um, the other thing to look out for is to make sure that the contrast is good. So as much as possible, I try and make sure that uh, the text and the background are sufficiently different. Obviously, white and black is perfect, but white and black is a little bit boring. So um, whenever you use a light background, try and make your text dark. And, and if you use a dark background, try and make sure your text is white. And uh, Another thing that uh, sometimes is missed is headings, H1s should always be bigger than H2s, and H2s should always be bigger than the main text, and so forth. So that's an important uh, concern. Um, another thing which is becoming more important is um, you need to have consideration for users on the move. So uh, always check to see what it looks like in a mobile device. And uh, we can do that quite easily these days. So if you inspect, we've got this little button here. Um, so you can sort of check to see what this looks like in a mobile uh, device. So this is responsive, but I can pick, uh, you know, this is a very basic phone. Um, now, I'll be honest, there's there's something I, I am trying to track this down. I don't quite know what's causing it. I'm going to hit refresh. Um, so what I've got is I've got an element somewhere in my page which is causing this uh, this to sort of stick out. I've been looking looking for it for a really long time. If anyone finds it, um, I'd be so happy. Um, 
but what it's doing is it's kicking out the size of the the body or the html i'm not sure which too too much and um <clears throat> uh actually i wonder if i've got if i got uh, i've got a trackpad here i'm just going to zoom in so really what i want is i want the slides to be full width <clears throat> um but there's something something is kicking it out on an iphone but i'll just check a larger iphone slightly better but <clears throat> I'm trying to track down this rogue element that's causing me problems. Anywho, so uh, it's always good to check check your website just to make sure it's it is usable at least in a mobile device. Now I have to scroll. Uh, where were we? Website design. Uh, another thing is uh, space at the top of the page is very valuable. So this is why, you know, when everything's fully expanded, this does take up a lot of room. So this is why I do want to have a kind of like a slides only view. And, um, you know, so you can still access. Um, also have a look at the bottom, the bottom footer is also removed so we can go full screen so that's that's my way of answering this that the um, space at the top of the page is very valuable so you have to have put your important things up first uh, this is why corporate events and weddings were very important in the um, Victoria stars website and uh, then you know there's you have to trust your audio other audiences will scroll to scroll down the page so make sure what's important is at the top. This is why I want about us in the um, assignment to be at the top. And that needs to be impressive enough to cause users to scroll down. Um, so it, again, in a multi-page website, and most pages are, um, you should be looking at having some sort of banner and title ideally a logo, and we'll have a look at Crown, as I said, uh, in more detail soon. Um, contain an indication of which page the user's on. So I've got these little flags here, you know, little navigation, lecture three, page 14. And if you're ever stuck, you can click this link and go right back to the top. Um, actually, maybe I should, um, this might be a nice improvement. I might actually put this in its own little thing down the bottom when I have time, so that when you do this, you know, there'll be a back to top up there. That might be an idea. I'll just pencil that in on my to-do list. Um, so easy access buttons. So sometimes your navigation, you know, you might, as I said, with the Victoria Star, I, I believe they're, um, their main links are very small, but their sub menus, these these are actually quite good. And if you can have a uniform style, that that is a a big plus. Um, and also, oh, this is important. Um, metadata in the head tag uh, that also helps search engines um, to index your page. Um, if you if you get online in the very early stages, like in the '90s, the um, the um, the metadata was very important. But of course, it's open to complete abuse. Um, people can put in anything they like. So, search engine technology was revolutionised when search engines actually looked at the body of a page. So, meta tags work well for if uh, developers are honest, but if they're dishonest, um, it does cause a problem. So meta tags still play a part, but uh, the body of the page is, is definitely what commercial website engines uh, look at these days. Um, so having, um, uh, did I say something about a uniform look? Uh, so if you have a sort of a website, a web page template for a multi-page website, um and try and sort of uh keep a consistent look and feel so it doesn't look like you've gone to a new website and the other thing is if you have a 
external style sheets. Um, you 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 can have all your styles in that sheet, and it will apply to all pages. And we'll be looking at that um, in the CSS uh, lectures coming up. So um, now I will point out we we were having problems with caching. So whenever a browser speaks to a server, sometimes there's a negotiation as to what data is is good enough. And um, we do have this problem that um, sometimes the server gives you an old copy of your style sheet, which saves on server resources because it's in the cache and it's really quick. But the problem is, um, if you're developing a website and you're using a server, even a local server on your desktop, uh, the server can serve you an old version, and it's very frustrating because you you want the version you're working on. Um, so anyway, so I've got a little announcement. Uh, um, week double X, you know, it applies to all weeks. I've got this nuclear option, handy tip, defeating server caching issues. So. Um, Anyway, to get around this, um, so normally what you do is you would include a style sheet. Um, and uh, what, what would happen is the, the website comes down to the client, to the browser. And then the browser says, oh, I need to go and get this um, style sheet from the server. And the server says, oh, here's, a, here's an old copy. Um, I'm too busy to get you a fresh copy. And this was the problem. So there were two requests. But what actually happens when you use PHP, and we will be using PHP, looking at PHP in weeks uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, what this is doing, this is telling the server, actually, can you embed this file into the page you're preparing and, um, and then send it down to the client? So <clears throat> as far as the client or the browser knows, this, this um, this is actually built into the page. So this, this is a way of beating the caching issue and keeping it fresh. So when you're developing, um, do this. So this is pretty much you know week tw up to week 12 advice here. Um, when you're developing, uh, do this, the, 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 the style and the, also the JavaScript, uh, that'll be fresh and then when you finish developing and you release your website commercially then you can swap back to the old style which uh, is actually more efficient for the server because um, they can issue the cached version of the style sheet it's a lot less expensive uh, for a server to do that so anyway that's um, <laughs> the thing with the announcements there um, so this this is true for um, for the final version. Uh, navigation bars, um, as I said, this is basically my navigation bar. Um, usually placed at the top or bottom, but as we saw with the, say, the um, W3 schools, uh, you'll, you'll have like a main bar and also a sub menu. So once you click the main area you're looking at, you then get a sub menu along the side. Um, but in our assignment, we're not looking for too many links, and the links are internal links. So what what um, what I'd like you to do is have a navigation um, that's more like my um, table of contents pages, where you actually scroll down to the correct area. Although I, I, I suppose my navigation links, because uh, all the content is loaded, this is actually a single um, a single page which is just basically turn sections on and off. So my my these navigation links are a little bit closer to what I'm looking for in the assignment. I keep I keep missing this trick when I when I select the HCI lecture it goes back to the very start, which is a bit frustrating. So let's uh, scoot back to where we were. Um, Yeah, so navigation bars should be at the top, but also you'll see many uh, are also in the bottom just so that people don't have to scroll to the top again. Um, the other thing is uh, when users are using 
uh, search engines. Uh, they might not necessarily come to your homepage. So it's important that you've got a, a link to your uh, homepage on every page, just so they can get back to the to the right thing. And if you look at Canvas, uh, how Canvas sold this is they've got this breadcrumb uh, arrangement. So okay, for some reason this is not you know, it's Canvas. Um, not sure why that is not linking at the moment, but that's a link to the home page. But I've got a, I've got a link to the home page here. And some of you may have noticed that um, my navigation here um, sort of is sticky. Uh, so I'll be looking for sticky in one of the assignments. Um, this is because I'm using a a style sheet um, override plugin that's actually putting my own styles that I have written to make Canvas a little bit more usable. Um, so um, so I'll, ju I'll just I'll just uh, sort of jump onto this. Uh, so in the assignment, I'd like your navigation links to look button like. I don't want them to be actual buttons, so don't use the button tag. Um, they just need to be styled using CSS to be button-like. So these are button-like. Uh, these are a little bit too button-like. Th these might be more nicer. Um, but what I'm trying to avoid is links like this, which are very plain links, and also plain links like these main links. These links are much better. These are actually, say, button-like, uh, button and this link is also button-like as well. Gosh, can you imagine like trying to hit <laughs> that? <laughs> these are so small. I've just noticed how tiny these are. Uh, good luck with usability uh, there, which we'll be looking at very shortly. Um, so uh, the main content area. Um, now, people read differently. So uh, when you're reading a book, you People skim, let's be honest. When you're reading a book, people skim. Um, but on a website, people really skim. So you have to kind of have little pictures. And a good combination is having you know, a healthy mix of images and um, text, uh, just, just to stop people like skimming and completely missing your website. Another thing, uh, keep your paragraphs short. So uh you know really two or three sentences per image is a fairly healthy kind of a balance um so um but of course you you want to make sure that you do actually put text because some people like reading let's face it um so you don't want to make it so short that they say nothing so it's um you don't want an avalanche of text but you don't want to have an absence of text either uh, another thing, uh, it's very easy to fall into sort of marketing terminology and advertising copy. Just be aware of that. Uh, people are wary of snake oil salespeople. So don't oversell your product. You'll end up compromising the integrity. Uh, use objective language. Uh, you know, be concise. And this is another thing with uh, search engines. Search engines are looking for fake websites. So if you use language that you might find in a fake website, you could find your search engine rankings uh, dropping as well. And uh, again, keep your audiences in mind. What might appeal to an audience, uh, sorry, so to a wedding audience, is going to be very different to what's going to appeal to a nightclub audience. Um, so, um, so Robin Williams, um, she is not to be confused with a famous comedian. Um, so uh, she came up with this very cute an acronym, which uh, uh, is probably responsible for her selling so many books. Um, so she has these things. So contrast, uh, different elements should be different, just so it's clear that things are different. So. What I'd like is your about us section to be visually different to your, you know, now showing section um, in the website. Sort of, sort of, really like this. Um, oops, let's go back to home. Um, oh, another little trick: uh, if you click 
if you arrange it so that your header is also a navigation link to home, that uh, is quite quite good. So um, you know, this is section. This is probably a little bit shorter than what I'm looking for in your assignment. Um, but uh, these sections, if you like, are visually distinct. It's, it's clear that you're on a different section as you are scrolling. Um, repetition, even though um, even though they are different, you will notice that they've got a sort of similar design layout. There's a bit of a left and right uh, thing going on, but essentially kind of image over here, text over here, read more there. And if we scroll down, we see it's a similar pattern. The only thing that's happened is this box has been left aligned rather than right aligned. Um, so even though they're visually distinct, because they they are similar they're directing traffic to different parts of the site um, there is some repetition of uh, some style here uh, alignment this is really important uh, everything on the page should be there for a reason and also if things aren't aligned things do get um, a little bit raggedy um, one 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 problem i have and i know it's not you know, there's like team centered align, um, but I'm very much, uh, what is it, text align. So at the moment, this is center aligned. So I, um, I'm a big fan of justified text. Oh, is it? Um, There's just so many styles. Oh, yeah, I thought it was text align. Um, just what did I type? I'll have to review. I think I just I think I said uh, justify, didn't I? Um, justify text. I don't know. I just I just think you know this this is kind of messy. Um, center alignment. It's just my thing. I think justify text is good because you've got left alignment and right alignment. The only issue is is sometimes the spaces are. Oh, let's try that again. I think I typed in justified. That's my guess. So we've got left aligned, right aligned. The spaces are a little bit bigger, and sometimes it can be a problem. But I just think this is a little bit neater than centered text. Anyway, that's. Just a heads up. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of centered text, but <clears throat> anyway, more on that later <laughs> during the marking phase of your assignments. Uh, so that's alignment. Um, also, there should be visual connections to um, other related elements. So, uh, so each one of those text things you know the one thing that you can't take away is they have a uniform style so there's a visual connection and finally proximity things that are related should be together so um you, you know an arbitrary bad example here so um i've got this slide title and then all the way over here i've got uh, which lecture it is and which slide we're on um we can fix it by doing that um but uh, you know, sometimes you might have um, let's just say a price table. You might say adults, and then you have this huge space, and then the price over here. Um, that's bad. It's better to have the price closer to to the um, text. So that's one thing to look out for in your assignments. Uh, so this is Robin's uh, homepage. So definitely um, go there if you want to sort of read a little bit more. Now, in usability, uh, user interface design or any sort of usability design course, um, there are other things to look out for. Um, so if you know those, definitely enact those 10 things or what, whatever they are. Um, oh, man, I, I need to write all these things down because I always forget their names. Uh, heuristics, that's what they're called. So if you know about the 10 heuristics um, of user interface design, definitely implement those as well. Uh, so contrast, this is, um, uh, this is 
Um, so think, oh, this is a link to, I think, um, a, another lecturer's website. So uh, got a feeling that's broken. Yep. Okay, so I'll just make a note of that. Um, so, um, sorry about that. Uh, that's a link to Electra's. So Electra's taken my slides and adapted them, and I've just realized I've missed the link to fix. Um, so uh, one problem is if you, uh, you, you might see this, you want to make text bold, and you want to make all the text bold. If you make everything bold, you make nothing bold. Or another way of saying it, I think, is the more famous one, is if you highlight everything, you highlight nothing. So you have to sort of use bold and italic and caps um, as sparingly as possible, just so that um, it it you don't then sort of highlight things that are ordinary. So if I made everything bold except for the word shape, uh, shape would then be highlighted. So um, Actually, I just want to check. I've got a feeling I'm using a CSS style here. No, I'm not. Um, I thought for a moment I might have been using um, a span and a style, but I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna check. I just want to test something out. Because uh, of course this whole TLDR thing, you know, totally not concerned by that. Um, there's a text. Oops. There's a text style. This is all CSS, by the way. We will we'll be looking this uh, next week. Um, there's text rendering. Nope. Um, it might be text decoration. Maybe. No, <laughs> I didn't. I don't. Some of these styles, I've never heard of them. I thought there might be one which is uppercase, but um, no. I thought there might be one. I've just, I've just got to, I just want to see if I can. Text transform, That's that's what it is. Uppercase. <laughs> so um, yeah, I might actually come back and put a span on that and actually uh, put a CSS style on there, text transform uppercase. That might be a, a nice touch, because that's bold, because it's bold and italic, because it's italic. And that's just me typing in caps. Um, so yeah, use that sparingly. Uh, try not to overuse it. Um, and also, oh, this is another important thing. Um, the, the sections, I'd, I'd like you to make them visually distinct, but it's also important that the footer um, doesn't look like it's just a continuation of the page. Same with the header and the navigation. Uh, repetition, so this is repetition. So uh, repeating visual elements on a page. So as I said, with the Victoria Star, um, those sections, wedding, corporate events, uh, nightclub, parties. Um, if the visual elements are repeated, um, the user doesn't get any jarring, which uh, distracts from cognitive ability. Although there is a lot to say, uh, which RMIT is doing research into at the moment. Um, if you make things too cohesive, it's very easy just to like be a passive reader and you make skimming more um, more prevalent. So uh, this advice is is um, also being looked at. You know, sometimes you need to put in things that actually stop users from uh, seeing properly. I'm just going to um, try and find something. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, There's this this font. I was actually thinking of updating my heading font. Uh, 
to to be this font at RMIT. So uh, it's a sans forgetica new typeface design to help students study. So if you have something that makes it hard for students to read, and by students, I mean anyone. I consider myself a student of life, so to speak. Um, if you slow people down, it actually allows the part of the brain that pays more attention to things to to get a get a chance to read things. So I've been waiting because they've got a really good this font's great for headings. Um, but what I'm really hoping for is um, it's kind of like a, a typeface. Um, so I think I think it's a little bit too bold for main text. I'd like to see a thinner version. Uh, you know, like it'd be nice if this um, font weight, um, there was a version of this font, but with this font weight. So um, that's that's a good counterpoint to this whole making a web page uh, easy for people to read. Um, yeah, so make sure, um, coming back to the notes now, making sure um, you know the navigation bars on the same place, um, footers at the bottom, nothing surprises the user that detracts from them uh, understanding the actual content on your page. Um, and yeah, this, this is a cute little, um, you know, someone said something and they may have done heaps of research, but of course, if you have a great sound bike, you'll sound bite, you'll be immortalized forever. So users spend most of the time on other websites. So when they come to your website, if your website's different, you know, they might just go, Oh, this is a little bit weird. Um, I'm going to go somewhere else. And, uh, I don't know if anyone is a Reddit user, but Reddit are currently, like they, they've they sort of stuck with their, I don't know if it's 1990s kind of website, definitely say an early 2000s styling. Uh, they've recently um, restyling their website, so it looks more modern. And um, I think, I think um, you know, one of, one of the attractions for Reddit was that it was a kind of like a, a geeks website and um you know i think i think a lot of hard die hard reddit users might feel that it's looking a little bit slick and a little bit too much like um you know other websites so um it's a brave brave move by reddit um just they've just been doing that quite recently alignment uh this is one important thing which i was talking about before um Um, when when you're looking at your page and your text and your images, take take a couple of steps back and just see. Yep, you know the lines are right. Text is aligning with the images that it's associated with. Um, you know, if you've got some posters, if the posters are all in a row, make sure they're all the same height. The width doesn't matter so much. If if you've got to say a column view, make sure all the posters are all the same width, the height doesn't matter so much. There are just lots of little things you've got to make sure the alignment is um, is correct. And also, this is an important thing, with a form, if you have your labels and your fields um, different sizes, that does look a little bit raggedy. So that's uh, another thing to look out for. And here we go with the proximity. I've just got I didn't, I'm not repeating myself here, no. Um, again, things should be long together. So if they're related, they should be long together. So um, I think I was explaining before, you know, you've got something over here, let's just say adult seat price. You know, you don't want to have a huge gap between the title and the actual seat price, say over here. And um, last week, we, we had a look at, um, say, drop-down lists. So, you know, commands are not in one giant list. You know, menu items are not in one giant list. Um, if you have, a say, a long drop-down list, 
it's a good idea to use those opt list groups to sort of group them together and then have alphabetical listing or something. So um, <clears throat> I might talk about one thing that annoys me with Canvas is the older system we had, which was Blackboard. And I'm just going to do a quick mute cough. Um, we were able to put these links into groups and um, but Canvas has got this very clean look, so we've got all the links together. So um, apologies if you if you don't understand the order. Um, you, you may see less links than me. I, I think I've got a couple more links. Uh, but I keep my links in a section in alphabetical order, so I know roughly where they are. But you know, ideally, I would like to have to break this up into, say, two or three groups. Um, so this is, if you like, a one giant list, and uh, it, you know, they get too long. You, you, you go, no, not that one, not that one. Oh, it's around here somewhere. So I've got it in alphabetical order, so I can go to S and go syllabus. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so that's that's another thing, just just to be mindful of. Uh, use of images, uh, as I said before, it's a good idea to have a good mix of images and um, text. So uh, an image can basically communicate a lot of information. So these people look like they're having fun. They might be on a date. Maybe you're on a date and you'd like to go somewhere. Why not come to our cinema, perhaps? Um, another thing is, you know, cinemas, uh, you know, they make money from selling movie tickets, but they also sell money from selling things from the candy shop. So uh, that's a bit of a plug, you know, stop by our candy shop. And also, um, particularly um, with an older cinema, you know, you may need to sort of hammer it home that we now have 3D projection facilities. So all of these uh, people, uh, they're not wearing sunglasses, they're wearing, uh, you know, 3D I think if you look really closely, you can make out these are not sunglasses. These are 3D glasses just written there. Um, very, very subtle there. So uh, in order to sort of communicate this with words, um, it'd be a lot. So having a picture can explain a lot. So there's a saying, show, don't tell. But there are people out there that like to read. So it's always good to obviously have some text next to it. So even though I say here, how likely is it? Um, trust me, there are some people who like to read. They'll literally turn images off if they can. Um, now, creating usable websites. Once websites get very big, and we will be looking at this in more detail in the chat, uh, you need to have sitemaps, um, which have got all the links, uh, pages. You know, like um, you need to think about breaking your website down into um sort of index pages with links laid out in say alphabetical order or something um so sitemaps and index pages they're quite similar um but usually sitemaps are sort of structured logically structured but index pages are in alphabetical order so you can sort of go you know you, you find something without knowing what you're looking for um probably more useful, as I say here, in technical websites where you're looking for, say, uh, brother laser printer DX12347. It's good to have that in alphabetical order. And a search facility, um, which I have. Um, so if you haven't discovered this already, you can look for anything. Um, and it will pull up any slide with that word. It's not it's not very complex. It basically, whatever you type, it looks for that string. So it looks at the pages, says, is this substring in this page? Uh, if it is, show the slide. If not, don't show the slide. So uh, that's, uh, that's another important thing. Once your website gets too big, so our assignment, we won't be having search, uh, you know, because it's, it's a fairly small website. 
Um, so that's the audience component out of the way, I guess. Um, now accessibility, this, this is uh, very important because it's not just a good idea, it's also the law. If you don't make your website accessible, you can get sued. And um, maybe not in Australia, but uh, in America, there's a huge industry where lawyers, uh, you know, they they get the grades to go to law school. Well, it's not enough work. We better create some work. So uh, there's law. I'm, I'm probably being unfair to America. I do apologize if I'm being uh, not, not so much racist, countryist, I suppose. Um, but they, you know, I've heard some amazing stories about uh, disability discrimination acts. Just, just making buildings accessible and also websites accessible because it's law. It's important that you um, at least do something um, to to make your product accessible. So, um, so what? I'll just focus on really three things in this course. Um, so, you know, so physically, um, you know, and as you get older, I'll be honest, you know, people start suffering from rheumatism. Um, you know, it's, it's not even just um, severely physically disabled people. It's, it's definitely old people or just people who are maybe on a train <laughs> you know and they've, they've only got an eye so um you just got to make sure that you know your website is possible obviously uh, using a tab key uh, on an iphone is not going to cut it uh, but if you're at a desktop making sure that some of the mobility issues can use the tab key to navigate um through form elements for example uh so there's an attribute uh i don't think we really covered this but in the form um, form fields can have a tab index so that um, you can tab through. The default, I'll be honest, the default um, order is, is you know, it's good to know it's there just in case you've got a strange kind of layout of your form. Uh, the other thing is visual, you know, does your website have good contrast? Uh, so again, it's not just blind people, it's uh, people with color blindness, people whose sight is getting on a bit and it's not as good as it used to be. So a uh, you know, bit of a disclosure here. Um, on campus, um, I'll see students with their 11 inch retina display laptops and they'll be asking me questions about their code and I'm, I'm like, I'm really sorry, I can't see your code. Uh, do, do you have a, you know, a, a magnifying glass I could borrow? Uh, so you just have to be aware. Um, just because you can see it doesn't mean everyone can see it. So uh, you need to have decent sized te text. Um, and my my solution to this is to, you know, have this so it is can be made larger. Oops. Um, but uh, there's another thing to consider. Um, sorry, I've just lost my train of thought. Um, you know, sometimes you can have s sort of um, you know thin text. Um, if you if you find a font that's just naturally bold, um, you know you you can then uh, like a a bold text will have better contrast than a thin text of the same color so that's another issue uh, that's another solution um, to a problem now um, I also have another link I think I've got this in the Tutan lab sheets uh, but there there is a, a sort of more scientific way of going around here but I just want to come to Palaton. Okay, I'm not sure why that's taken so long to load. Uh, let's come back. So I'll just cover intellectual <clears throat> just quickly. So when writing, and I do need to do it with the cough, I'm afraid. Hang on. Um, 
Make sure your sentences are simple and concise. Um, as we said before, try to use um, complex terminology and um, marketing industry jargon. Uh, you know, and I, I've got an example here, which is obviously totally a send up. I grab the thesaurus and try to find as many ridiculous words as possible. So whilst this sentence makes sense, it might not be accessible to uh, most of your users. Um, and they may find themselves on another website. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, this is the website. I'm sure why it's spinning. Um, so one thing this website has, which I really like, is somewhere. Um, Oh, here we go. Um, if any anyone is 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 into irony, uh, this is visual simulation, and it's so small. <laughs> it's it's not really that accessible for people with visual difficulties, such as myself. I'm not blind. I'm just getting old, you know. Um, so what they have is um, they have these. Um, simulators and they just say how what sort of percentage of the population suffers from these conditions and as much as possible they try and simulate what your website will look like or your color scheme will look like um, to these people so um, this is the big one um, uh, I suppose it's safe to say when someone in my family suffers from color blindness I suspect it's this one um, so th this just allows you to see, see your website in, you know, just to make sure what has good contrast to you, um, also has good contrast to other people. And, um, you know, then you might have something like, um, unable to see color. So what does it look like to someone who can't see color? You know, okay, it's pretty boring. But the contrast is good. You can sort of see that there's a good chance that the contrast is good. Um, it's another one of these. It's, it's also quite good uh, to come here just to see, you know, make, get a kind of a feel what um, other types of color blindness look like. Um, so some of these are very subtle. Oops. Um, but it, it just gives you the reassurance that, you know, it is relatively... Um, You know the the contrast is is basically accessible to people with color blindness. Um, so as I said, we're just going to really concentrate. I'm going to look be looking out for physical, visual, and intellectual concerns in the assignments. Um, now another thing with um, alt tags for images, um, this is a common mistake. Uh, just say. Cinema image. Oh, I've just uh, I've got a little bit of a bug there. I'll have to try and fix that up. Um, and try and describe your images, especially if they're important, so that uh, someone who is very visually impaired can have a screen reader that reads out young couple enjoying a 3D movie whilst eating popcorn. That's, um, that basically summarizes summarizes that image if you just say cinema image that's 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 no use to anyone um you know people who can see the image can see it people who can't they just go oh it's an image of a cinema gosh i wasn't expecting that on a cinema website so make sure um this is the important thing a descriptive alt tag so you know imagine this could pop up on the exam uh, don't say provide an alt tag, say provide a descriptive alt tag, and perhaps um, you know, an example. Uh, another thing, uh, your color scheme should have good contrast. Uh, don't create rainbow websites. Um, when picking a color scheme, it's, it's a good idea to have, say, a limited number of colors. Um, and colors, you know, 
one color should be the main color and then you have subsequent colors your secondary color is maybe i don't know 30 <clears> percent <throat> of your color and then next color would be 10 percent or something like that um i've seen good i'll be honest i've seen really good rainbow websites uh but it's it's very easy to uh, create bad ones so you just have to be careful and if you've got budget and uh, obviously if you're the abc and government regulations uh what they do is they actually supply transcripts so i've got an example of a written transcript of um an abc 730 report I'm not sure if it's still live um but i'm hoping it is uh now development and development process um agile waterfall methods um there are kind of two models so these these work good for large projects so it's it's more rigid though um so you have analysis and design make sure you you totally understand the project or as best you can uh then you do the implementation and testing and then you have your evaluation and then it is launched and then there's just maintenance that goes on after that so uh, the waterfall model is usually quite rigid, um, but uh, it's not that rigid. I like to say more rigid than this model. Um, so this is suitable for large projects where clients and developers need to fully understand requirements for undertaking work. Um, and it also it protects, protects developers for any sort of feature creep, which can happen. You know, a client can just ask for one more thing and it just you know, it just keeps going and going. So uh, you end up working for a dollar an hour uh, in the end. Uh, so the Agile model is is a sort of better for sort of smaller projects. And what you do is you try and build a, a, a section of a project. And, um, you know, you sort of agree what you're building that uh, week or fortnight or month. And then you deliver it, make sure it's working. Then you go on to the next um, section of the project. So... Um, this is sort of delivered in more regular cycles, and it's better with when you've got a good relationship with the client, they're involved in their own project. And uh, also you get to sort of learn, learn more about each other as you're developing and it gets more efficient as time goes on. So uh, a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of switch over to the agile model, even for you know these large projects. Um, so uh, basically, you know, you can almost say this is the old way of doing things um, and this is the new way, but uh, there's definitely a lot of hybrid models that combine the best of both models. Um, now, I've got an example here. Um, and the reason why I have this is uh, I sort of do this in the lecture just to sort of slow people down, make sure people are awake. And uh, I played this scenario that the semester's over, your assignments were good, but then, oh, gosh, for some reason, your final results, you know, you failed or you've got a PA or something. And you're thinking, gosh, I must have really done badly on the exam. There's no way I could have got less than a credit. And uh, so you think, um, you know, before you contact the lecturer uh, and embarrass yourself, Trust me, that's not the case with me. Um, please contact me as soon as possible. Um, you know, you want to know what the correct procedure is to query your grade. So you could turn to the website. And so what I want you to do is just go to the website and work out, um, obviously, maybe if you're at home with someone rather than another student, um, just, just sort of click around and see how friendly is the RMIT website? How does it help you? um find out the correct information so if you like pause the video and i'll wait for you to pause the video and then we'll come back okay and now we're back uh so hopefully you had fun doing that exercise how many clicks did it take you to need to to find out what you need uh also did you find out what you need that's a good question so I've got a little bit of a summary here because this does happen. I do get quite a few students coming to me, you know, six months later <laughs> sometimes. Um, and it's quite frustrating. Um, 
because of course the sooner you get in the the quicker quicker it is imagine you know this like um you know like molten lava or something no i, I haven't got a good analogy in my head just now um uh, i don't know like a, the cadbury chocolate factory or something if there's a problem with the molten chocolate tank uh you need to get onto it as soon as possible you don't want to be in there with jack hammers jack hammering out you know solidified chocolate um so a lot of these things are time is of the essence so i've got um hopefully a link to some of rmit's websites oh no they're, they're, they're updating the website and um, now i've got to go and find it again um let me just uh i should really put target equals blank on these things uh oh this is a this is annoying rmit are, are redoing their website and so there's a lot of broken links so unfortunately this is a little bit frustrating for me um which only basically reinforces the point that you have to make sure your website is accessible so uh uh just to summarize uh you know definitely come and see me and um you may need to apply to special consideration if there, there are any reasons um why things went wrong but uh you know i just want to make the point that staff can make mistakes um we try not to make any mistakes but sometimes you know something bad does happen uh, a friend of mine who's a tutor, he recently had this exact same problem, which prevented him from graduating. And um, it's sorted out now, but it's uh, something that's quite scary. So, um, you know, say, I, you know, you, you are allowed to see your exam and uh, know your exam in more detail. And I will be, um, let me just pull up Canvas, just give you a sneak peek. Of, actually, I might go off screen because I, I don't want to display any student names. Um, so I'll just pick marks. Oh, no, hang on. No, I don't need to do that. Um, I'll just go to assignments. So I've got the assignments, but I've also got these hidden uh assignments which uh is, is going to be your exam breakdown so you get to see your exam breakdown um so i like to release this shortly after the official results are released if i forget please somebody let me know and i'll i'll release them and uh so you could you could then get a full breakdown of your score you've got your assignment breakdown your pra practical and your exam and you can see exactly how your grade has been calculated uh this just to let you know this is the um uh this is the um weekly participation i can't remember what c is for c4 weekly course participation i had to put the word course in there because um i can't search for assignments unless i've got three letters so uh that was my sort of canvas um again this this is not this is not a link why isn't that a link canvas <laughs> go back to can gotta love gotta love canvas um so make sure make sure you sort of come and see me um contact me make sure make sure your results are correct and um if if you don't like what i say and my boss says start an appeals process and also talk to the student union um, these have been helpful i would like to say that um, uh, i think i've only had one or two students who've ever got to this stage and that's that's been you know with my blessing so sometimes a process is out of my hands and i said you know you should really appeal this and take it further so uh um it's not an us against them situation. So um, I like to think I'm a more friendly instructor than than average. So uh, so just to close, wrap out today's um, 
TLDR chat. What are we up to? An hour and a half now, probably. Uh, so what I've got is I've got basically um, a. Ho hopefully this is this will open. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, but what I've got is um, I've got some screenshots from an ass assignment where we. I think one one of the Hobbit movies. I think it was the final one. Yeah, Battle of the Elf Five Five Armies. I showcase a lot of good good things. Um, and then as we scroll down, I also include some, you know, less than brilliant websites. Um, I think I talk about justified text here. Um, some, if you ever use tables, please don't use tables for layout. You know, you'll get this, this effect, uh, and then it all crunches up and is a mess. And, um, Use of inline blocks. These are really good. This is good advice. We'll be covering this in CSS soon. If you put things in containers that kind of have a size on a larger screen, they'll reflow, but on a smaller screen, they'll uh, you know crunch down. So they look you know they'll look good on both screens. You don't get this stretched out uh, effect. And uh, yeah, a bit of alignment issues with center alignment and. Um, you know, with proximity, here's the image, big space, and then the text over here. And um, one thing, white space is not always white, so we've got some, you know, dead space here. Uh, proportional image, um, I, I did talk about this. With images, if they're going to be in a column, make sure the, all the widths are the right height. Don't Don't bother scaling the height. The height will look after itself. If you just scale one side of an image, the height looks after itself. And um, here's a rainbow website. You know, uh, I want all the colors. Um, try to avoid that. Um, some nice ones. Uh, so these worked. Uh, there's a bit of a contrast here. So just got to be mindful of the background. Um, shouldn't dominate and the background here um, this is one one good way of making a background more interesting you have text on a translucent background so you can still see the background but it doesn't interfere with you know this text but you can see that this text is a little bit um, difficult to read uh, this was a, kind of like I quite like the the background of this like it's a very nice low contrast white background it was interesting enough to be suggestive uh, but completely does not fight with the text um uh i sort of i explain why red on black doesn't really work it's it's due to a hardware thing you've got three lights in each pixel and so uh, when you have these primary colors they they're quite strong because they're like little pin needles of color in the retina so most of the screen is black two-thirds of the screen is black and you've just got a third of it this very bright color so that that's my explanation of why red on black is not as good a contrast as say red paint on a black background so sometimes it's good to just to introduce a little bit of um green and blue just so it, it becomes a slightly lighter version of the primary color again a bit of a proximity issue here um very bad alignment bad contrast and bad color choices as well um an interesting form but unfortunately on smaller screens the these fields were blocked out and i've got some some examples this will be interesting when we come to programming uh this whole thing can be solved with a single regular expression um, so it just shows you how much regular expressions save on programming um, just looking for any other things we'll be looking at uh, regex 101 to test regular expressions and so you can put in some ones you know you'll pass and maybe some close misses you want to make sure that fail maybe the other way around there um, so this is actually a lecture example, um, uh, like a password detection 
string very advanced regex um, but I, I like to break things down just to let you know what's possible after this course okay so uh, that's the end of today's lecture so I'll just waffle on a bit so that the um, links to the next lecture and the previous lecture appear and I um, uh, just want to check uh, the discussions um, no no one's engaged yet so um, yeah make sure you ask questions HTML CSS questions oh I've, I've, I've just really actually I'll talk about this I recently had to put this in because um, RMIT online say oh you don't have a course queries discussion thread and uh, oh, these ellipses I'll cover this next week maybe um, I'd like to fix that um, what's happening is these these being truncated There's something called ellipses around here. Text overflow. Okay, maybe it's this one. I mean, you can see what they're doing. They're just trying to help um, truncate things. Oh, now it doesn't fit in the box. Turn off overflow. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely look into this. I'll, I'll cover this next week. This will be another style I'll be adding to my canvas overwrite <laughs> canvas overwrite thing um yeah I, I won't show it today okay i'm wrapping up i promise you i'm wrapping up so i'll see you in the chats and um have a have a good week